In this lesson, we're going to talk about the probabilities of disjoint and overlapping events. So there are a couple things that we need to know before we come up with a formula for overlapping events and the probabilities. First is that the definition of an intersection is the area that's going to be common to both events. So in this case, we have two circles. They represent events A and B. And the portion that is both A and B is called the intersection. Now you can think of it in this way, but I also like to think of it in terms of a street intersection. And in the case of Homestead High School, we've got uh, two streets. We have Homestead here and Mary running perpendicular to Homestead Road. And the intersection is going to be this area here that's common to both. The second term we need to know is called a union. And the union includes a portion that is A or B. So in this case, anything that's within either circle is going to be A or B. So that's part of the union of A and B. Now you can think of this again in terms of two streets that cross each other. In this case, the union of Homestead and Mary Avenue is going to be everything that's in Homestead and everything that's on Mary Avenue. So we call intersections and unions compound events. Now what happens if you have two events that don't overlap? Well, we call those events disjoint or mutually exclusive events. That means that A and B have no portion in common. So then, in this case, the probability that both would happen at the same time would be zero. So if we said, for example, that the probability of you being in school and at home, that would be zero because you can't be both in school and at home at the same time. So now we're ready to talk about the formula for disjoint probabilities of disjoint and overlapping events. The probability of disjoint and overlapping events is the probability of what we call A or B. And that equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So you can think about it this way. If I have the probability of A and I add that to the probability of B, I'm in a sense counting this area that's common to both twice. So I need to subtract that out of the equation in order to figure out the probability of A or B. And this holds for both uh, disjoint and overlapping events. Because if you have a disjoint event, there's no portion that's in common. So the value of A and B is going to be 0. So always when you're figuring out the probability of A or B, you say the probability of A plus the probability of B plus, or excuse me, minus the probability of A and B, or that area that you've counted twice that they both have in common. Another way to think about this graphically uh, is to think about this in terms of area. I want to find the area, the cumulative area, of A and B. Well, if I find the area of A, let's just say it has a radius of 3, and I find out that it's 9 pi, and I add that to B, that's also 9 pi, I'm again adding this portion that's common to both twice. So I need to subtract it out once, so I only count it once. So the area of A plus the area of B is really the area of A and B minus the area that's common to A and B. The last term we need to learn about is uh, what's called a complement. And the complement of an event is the probability that the event in question will not occur. And we say that <coughs> the complement is identified by A with a little line on top. And we call that line bar. So we say A bar. So the probability of A bar is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. So the probability that something will not happen is 1 minus the probability that it will happen. 